Hello, I'm Matthew Nichols. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Classics here at Reading. My research interests include libraries in the ancient world, and uh, with that I look a lot at more abstract uh, questions like book collection, scholarship, reading and writing, formation of libraries and the value of text within those buildings. But increasingly as I studied this subject I became interested in the physical space and environment in which these libraries were housed. Uh, questions like decoration, uh, interior volume, lighting, placement of decoration, elements like that, how the outside of the buildings and their street facades interacted with or gave entrance to uh, the more quiet spaces behind. Now I wanted to find a way of expressing some of these research findings visually because they're essentially visual topics. There are plenty of ways of doing this in two dimensions with pen and ink drawings and architectural reconstructions and that's very useful. But I thought it would be fun also to find three-dimensional ways of visualising these spaces and so I taught myself computer modelling and rendering uh, to create manipulable uh, interactive 3D models of space that you could fly into, uh, turn around and view from different angles, change elements of, change the lighting conditions, uh, place alongside other buildings in comparison. And so I started making uh, reconstructions of Roman libraries, um, the famous library of Celsus at Ephesus for example, or the smaller library uh, from Timgad in what's now Algeria, um, using the computer to reconstruct the actual state of these buildings and also what they looked like uh, in, the, in the past when they were new, with their inscriptions and their statues, their decorative programmes and their books still in place. I do a lot of teaching in Roman history, Roman architecture, and I run the MA in the city of Rome that we have here at Reading. And I decided to start developing modelling uh, in order to provide teaching tools for those courses. So what, I'm, what they looked like essentially when they were new and not as they now are, 2,000 year old uh, ruins, impressive as those are. And I use this for teaching at the undergraduate and graduate levels and I use it also out in Rome where I help teach at an annual undergraduate summer school at the British School at Rome. If we have a look on the screen here I can show you a bit of what I'm uh, doing and how I go about it. This, if we zoom out... Uh, you can see on the screen is the map of Rome that has uh, the uh, Aurelian wall circuit of the city forming a sort of city limits. Um, snaking through the middle of it is the Tiber River and flying in what I'm working on today are the structures on the island in the middle of the Tiber River. One of the interesting things the Romans did uh, was to decorate this island with the prow and stem of uh, a Roman ship carved in stone and this is what I'm trying to achieve here on the model some sense of the uh, curved stern and the, uh, the blunt bow of this island, as it were, swimming uh, upstream against the River Tiber with these bridges perhaps serving as, as oars almost. Um, if you remember the myth in which Aeneas rode up the River Tiber uh, to find the foundation point of Rome, um, it sort of evokes that in, in brick and stone. And then on top of the island, a range of buildings uh, that I'm working on, they're not finished yet, you can see this one's missing its roof, but when they're finished uh, this will hopefully uh, give an impression of uh, that island and its temples and uh, apartment buildings and gardens sitting in the middle of the River Tiber. Tiber Island, of course, is only one very small part of the city overall, and this is just an example of work in progress, but I'm hoping that as I develop this model and as it gets bigger and more complete, it will be an increasingly useful resource for uh, students and for scholars of the ancient city.